Good morning to everyone. Can we take this time to greet one another with a good morning? A good day to everyone who's also joining us in our live stream. Today, we're going to continue our series on the 15 words for life. But when we began the series at the start of the year, one of the things that I talked about was the fact that maybe we might not be able to finish it all in 15 weeks. Uh, the previous week, we just finished one of the things that uh, one of the topics that we talked about, and we did it in two parts because uh, uh, it was a very big topic. But today, we're going to start another mini series inside the series of the 15 words for life because there are a lot of things talaga when it comes to the Bible. Na these are words that no longer are understood the way that they were meant to be understood. For example, when we think about words and how, they're, how they change meaning, one of the things that really we have to think about is how time affects how we understand certain words. Kunyari po, no? Pag tayo po, when we try to understand the word salvage, for example, di ba? Salvage. Does anyone know the word salvage? Okay. Kawawa naman yung iba. Di ba? So salvage, of course, in English means to save. Let's say, di ba, merong taong na, na laglag sa tubig, na laglag sa da, ilog, linigtas mo, you salvage the person. Merong nasusunog na building, pumasok ka, you salvage the person. But in the Philippines, the word salvage, masaya ba i-salvage? Hindi eh, di ba? So obviously, ito lang po yun, no? it's just in this generation. The switch of countries already changed the meaning. So tayo po, when it comes to words that are found in the Bible, one of the things that we have to consider is the, how these words changed over time and how we understand them over time. And one of those words which we're going to talk about today is the word faith. Okay? Faith. In Tagalog, pananampalataya. Now, to begin with, I'd, I'll be reading from uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Kinokonek ko lang po yung ating screen. But in Hebrews chapter 11, we have there what is known as uh, the meaning of faith. So, if you have your Bibles, please open them with me to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. But let me just begin with the statement of what it is. In Hebrews 11 verse 1 to 3, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. And by faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. Now, when we try to understand the word faith, for a lot of us, we try to see it and we understand it as a set of beliefs. May mga bagay po na mga salita na itong mga bagay na to, we have to take whether or not we uh, see evidence of it or not. For example, di ba po, I was born in 1990. And during that time, Christianity was a lot different than it is today. Di ba? Ngayon po, uh, I mean, our understanding of God, or sorry, God does not change, but our understanding of God is that which changes. Parang bata, di ba? Galing sa pagkabata, konti-konti as time goes on, you become more well, un, well uh, informed and you can understand things a little bit better. So, back in the 80s and 90s, naalala niyo po, ito yung mga time na uh, bawal manood ng sine. Sino nakakalala? Yan, yung mga malapit na sa kamatayan. De joke lang. You can't listen to secular music, di ba? Naalala niyo po yun. And you can't even have friends who are not Christian, di ba? And alam niyo po yun, pag-iisip ko, grabe no, para tayo mga alien. Kasi di ba, pag-isipan niyo, tao ka ba nun? Parang hindi eh, di ba? But you see, that was what we understood at that time. We knew that there were things that we had to stand up for. What those things were, that's what we were trying to, you know, figure out. And so, during the 80s and 90s, it was a lot different than it is today. But I would always remember, yung, yung father ko po, no? He would always say na ang pinaniniwalaan lang niya, Bible. Okay? The Bible. He stands by the Word of God, by the Bible. So if the Bible says it, it must be true. If the Bible does not say it, he does not believe it. So may pagkaganon, no po? And so, growing up, I would always remember na we never believed any superstitions. 
Sino po ba dito may mga pamahiin? Wala. Sa taas meron? Wala rin. And you know, it's something that I find so strange. Kasi siyempre wala ako, hindi ako lumaki sa ganun eh. May mga alam po ba kayo mga pamahiin? Sure ako meron. Kasi ito, no po, we have a baby. And alam niyo po, our baby is, uh, for some strange reason, agaw pansin. Siguro dahil mukha siyang siopaw, no? So yung isip ng mga tao, alam mo yun, sobrang cute. So anyway, one time, naglalakad kami ng asawa ko, and as we were walking, biglang may lumapit, tas dinilaan yung anak ko. Sabi niya, biglang lumapit. Isip-isip ko, sino ka at ba't mo dinilaan yung anak ko? ba? So ito, ito, ito. Ano tawag doon? Usog. Pwera usog, ba? Sige nga, Englishin nyo, anong usog? Usog. ba? Usog. Ano yung usog? Basta sabi nila, kailangan mo dilaan para pag ha, ano, hating gabi, hindi iyak ng iyak yung baby. Kasi kung yung iyak ng iyak yung baby na hindi mo maintindihan ba't siya umiiyak, tawag doon usog. ba? Sabi ko, kakaiba. Isa pa. Minsan, eh, yung an- an- anak po namin, ano rin, gala. Kasi siyempre, sabi ko nga, ministry baby. Hindi pwedeng sanay na siya yung, yung iniintindi. Dapat iniintindi niya yung ministry. So, siyempre, all the time, lumalabas ng bahay. Minsan, sa gabi, di ba? Linabas namin ng gabi. Sa, linapitan kami, nasaan na yung saks nung bata? nasa na yung ano, bonnet? Sabi, baka mahamugan. English inyo, ano ang hamog? Sabi, fog, mist. Oh, meron ba talaga niyan sa Metro Manila? May fog ba sa Metro Manila? Walang fog smog yan kung meron kayo makita. Yung fog nasa kabundukan pag malamig. ba? But why do we believe that babies, pag linabas mo, mahahamogan? So you know, bilang isang modern and alam niyo po yun, uh, I consider myself to be interested in life. So I ended up trying to research. Kasi sabi ko, saan ba nang gagaling yung mga bagay na to? Malay natin, may pinanggagalingang katotohanan. So, sinerch ko, ano ang English ng usog? Try as hard as I can, hindi ko mahanap. Walang English ang usog at hindi ang gamot ng usog ay laway. Pamahiin, paniniwala po siya. Then, I started looking at the word hamog. So, totoo ba na dapat ang bata hindi ina-expose sa cold? Strangely, the research that I found was actually opposite. Children in Denmark, for example, when it is winter, they're brought out to sleep in the cold. And it increases the capacity of their immune system to fight against certain things. Kaya sabi ko, grabe no? In the Philippines, we have these quote-unquote beliefs. Mga paniniwala. And these are things that we take by faith. And I mean to say, hindi naman sa, alam niyo po yun, yung sa sinasabi kong mali, pero ganun na rin, di ba? But I mean to say, sometimes when we think about it, we laugh at sa- sa- something like this. But to a certain degree, hindi ba that's how we are as well? Yung meron silang pamahiin na pinaniniwalaan, pero parang ganun rin po tayo eh. Because there are things that we take by faith which we believe this is what brings us closer to God. And that's why we must unpack the word faith. We're going to go through a, a three-week series on the word faith kasi po ang hirap po maunawaan ng salitang faith. We're going to go first and foremost in the Old Testament to try to understand what is an ancient and authentic way to understand faith. Then we're going to follow that up, of course, with the New Testament where we're going to look at the book of Galatians and then the book of Romans. Now, again, what we're trying to do is we're, we're not going to try to go through the New Testament in order, but we're going to try to go through the New Testament by theme. Okay? So, uunahin natin ang Galatians kesa sa Romans because meron po tayong sinusubukang intindihin dito about how faith is. Now, today gagawin lang po natin is we're gonna go through the Old Testament and an example of faith kasi po, we have to see how it applies in the Old Testament and how the New Testament 
uses these concepts about faith to develop their understanding. So, let me begin with something that Marcus Borg said, okay? See, Marcus Borg was one of the most well-known uh, pastors of the United States in the 20th century. And sabi po niya, faith has three ancient and authentic definitions. Ito, kailangan natin paalalahanan, no? Three authentic and ancient definitions. The first of all is that faith is the same as trust. Okay? When we say faith, mahirap maintindihan eh, because sometimes we think it has to do with belief. Diba? Yung may mapaniniwala ka. But faith in ancient times always meant trust. And how do we understand trust? Trust is the ability of a person to do what they say they're going to do. Diba? How do you know that you trust a person? Sabihin mo, diba? Uh, for example, how does banking work? Banking. Sino po dito nasa banko nagtatrabaho? Natatakot kayo, baka utangan kayo, no? De, diba? How does banking work? You give them their money, your money, and you trust that they will take care of your money. Diba? That they will not use your money incorrectly and that one day when you go back sa kanila, they're gonna give that money back. Now, do you have any uh, insurance or, believe, or anything that will tell you that they are trustworthy? Not necessarily, di ba? For example, the year 2023 was quite an interesting year in banking. Di ba? How many banks foreclosed last year? Sobrang lalaki ng mga kanilang mga banko, sobrang lalaki ng mga pera na meron sila, pero nagsara. Whether you look at the US, whether you look at Europe, ang daming nagsarang banko. So ano nangyari sa pera na yun? Paano sila nalugi? Eh di ba trabaho nila hawakan yung pera? So yung tanong doon, anong ginawa nila sa pera? And that's why they closed. They used it in a way that ended up becoming a bad investment. Okay? So, trust is the belief, or rather, the, or, or you believing that someone say, or will do what they say they will do. Okay? Now, the second definition of faith is that faith is faithfulness or fidelity. Diba? Fidelity. Now, Tagalogin natin, no? Faithfulness is not pananampalataya. Ano siya sa Tagalog? Yan. Ka tuning. De. Ka tapatan, di ba? Very very different. When we try to understand faith and faithfulness, they sound very very different, but they actually are close to synonymous. Now, we use the words faithfulness usually if you want to try to understand it deeper when it comes to relationship, di ba? Pag meron kang boyfriend or girlfriend or asawa, we expect faithfulness from our partner. Diba? And that means that you will only look at that person. You will only have that person. So, in the ancient world, in the Old Testament, faith has always been understood as faithfulness. Now, here comes the last, the third way of trying to understand faith, according to Marcus Borg. The third is as a whole way of seeing. Perspective. Pananaw sa buhay. Bakit? Faith as perspective tells us there are three ways to look at life. The first is that life is against us. Galit ang buhay sa atin. Yun yung rason kung bakit, di ba po? Ano ang sinasabi po natin pag may pangit na nangyayari sa, sa buhay natin? Kunyari, di ba? Uh, nagising ka sa umaga, pag gising mo, bababa ka pa lang ng, ng kama, pag apak mo, natapilok ka. Pag tapilok sa'yo, ayun, injured. Gagising mo pa lang. Di ba parang yung buhay may galit sa'yo? Pagkatapos mo matapilok, punta ka sa CR para mag-toothbrush. Pag toothbrush mo, nasundot mo yung gums mo, duguan. Sino may kasalanan nun? Buhay, di ba? Tapos, paglabas na paglabas mo ng bahay, in-expect mo late ka na nga kasi natapilok ka na nga, nasugat ka pa, paglabas mo, traffic. Anong sinasabi natin, di ba? Hi, buhay. Hi, grabe naman talaga ang buhay, no? Pansinin po natin, we, somehow, in our own way, we have this sort of 
believe that life is against us. May galit sa atin ang buhay. The second way that we are to view life is life is indifferent towards us. Kung yung isa negative, yung pangalawa, neutral. ba? Ibig sabihin yan, ang Diyos or whatever higher power that we try to understand and equate life with does not care about us. What happens, happens. Kesera, sera. Ganyan lang talaga buhay. Kung may magandang mangyari sa atin, okay. Kung may pangit, okay. Ganyan lang talaga. And that's the second way to view life. But the third is to view life as a gracious gift from God. What does that mean? That everything, no matter what happens, leads to something beautiful and good. May pangit mangyari sa buhay mo? Hindi, galing sa Diyos yan. May maganda mangyari. May maganda nangyari sa buhay mo? Galing sa Diyos yan. May maganda mangyari. Whatever happens, it is all a gracious gift from God. So, ulitin ko po, no? Faith is known as trust, is known as faithfulness, but the third is known as a perspective of life. So, sa tatlong bagay na to, no? It is very far from how we understand faith to be believing a set of things. ba? Kaya today, as we look at the, at the word faith, we're going to go through an Old Testament story. Uh, excuse me, pwede lang natin i-reset lang yung uh, Roku. So, we're gonna go through an Old Testament story, which is also very well known in, uh, in Sunday school. But today, we're gonna try to look at it from a perspective of faith. Kasi honestly, it is the most authentic way for us to understand faith in Genesis. Okay? Now, in the book of Genesis, kasi po, there are, there are many, many, many stories about, God, about man and God, pero not all of them are relatable. Diba? Hindi siya lahat relatable. For example, Adam and Eve. Sino po ba dito, pag naglalakad kayo sa kalye, katabi niyo si Lord. Diba? Malabong usapan yun. But Adam and Eve literally walk with God. Tingnan natin si Abraham, for example. Si Abraham, kinakausap niya yung mga anghel. Pinaghahainan niya ng pagkain. Nakikipag-argue pa siya. Sino po ba dito naging bisita niyo na sa bahay niyo si Lord? Wala naman eh, di ba? O mas malabo pa, si Noah. Si Noah, nakikipag-usap sa hayop. Sabi niya, sakay kayo sa, bang- sa barko, sumasakay yung hayop. Meron ba dito, Dr. Doolittle rin kayo? Wala eh, di ba? So when we look at these examples of faith, the intersection of man and God, they were all trying to tell a particular story. But this story comes from Genesis 37 all the way up to Genesis 49. Is the first story in Genesis that talks about how God is with us today. Bakit? This story is the story of Joseph. Sino po may kilala? Joseph. Okay, Joseph. Good. Sa taas. Yan. Now, pansinin po natin. Ito ha, I challenge you. Maghanap po kayo from Genesis 37 all the way up to 49 of an instance where God spoke to Joseph. Sigurado po ako, hindi kayo makakahanap. Sipin niyo po, no? God spoke to Jacob. He wrestled with Jacob. One generation lang yon. The next generation, si Joseph hindi na kinausap ng Lord. All we can know about what the relationship of Joseph and God was that God was with Joseph. Yun lang ang sinabi. Sabi ko, parang tayo. Meron ba dito, kinausap na kayo ni Lord personally? Na hindi yung ano, no? Yung, hindi, na-discern natin. But rather yung talagang kinausap kayo. Nagpakita siya sa harap nyo at nakipag-usap. ba? Kasi ang sasabihin ko sa inyo, kung nagpakita siya sa inyo, hindi siya yun. Mumu yun. ba? Hindi eh. He does not make a physical manifestation anymore. In Joseph, we have that. How did God speak to Joseph? In dreams. Parang tayo, minsan kinakausap sa panaginip, kinakausap sa buhay, mga ganun bagay. And the second thing is, tignan nyo yung katabi ninyo. 
Sige, tingnan nyo. Tingnan nyo, tingnan nyo. Parang natatakot kayo sa katabi nyo, ah. Mukha po bang masamang tao? Guess what? That's exactly like Joseph. You know what I appreciate about the story of Joseph? Usually, when we look at the story of the Bible, it's usually isang kwento ng limitation, tatawagin siya ng Lord. Pag tinawag siya ng Lord, suddenly becomes someone who's parang very, very holy. Sobrang, uh, basta, yung alam mong may milagro eh. May, uh, may nangyari sa buhay niya. Kay Joseph, there is no such thing. Walang milagro, walang kahit anong happening where he, he was shown to be holier than anyone else. He began as a very egotistical person and he ended as an egotistical person. Parang walang character growth. And yet, it's coming and it is good to see and know because we realize that the work of God is not dependent on a holy person. The work of God is simply dependent on a person who is willing to trust God. Because if there is something beautiful about the story of Joseph, it is a perfect example of what trusting God looks like. So, tingnan lang po natin. Again, if you have your Bibles, please open them with me to Genesis chapter 37. Kinoconnect ko lang po yung screen. Parang feel ko meron pong may balat sa puwet ngayon eh. Ayan, kumonekta na. In Genesis chapter 37, we have here the story of the family of Jacob. Okay. So sabi po dito, in verse 2, Joseph, being 17 years old, 11th son of Jacob, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilha and Zilpah, his father's wives, and ito ang unang salta po natin on the character of Joseph. Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now, something to take note of here, no? Nowhere does it say na masasama yung mga anak ni Bilha and Zilpa. ba? As we can see, walang kwento ng kasamaan. Despite that, Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Pag gamitin natin ang 21st century language natin dyan, ano ang tawag natin sa tao tulad po ni Joseph? Alam niyo kung ano? Jolly Bee. Alam niyo yung salitang Jollibee? Ha? Ito yung sa trabaho, yung mga paborito nating tao, yung mga Jollibee. Bakit? Pa? Bida! ba? Si Joseph was a perfect example of pabida. Nowhere does it say na masasama or pangit ang ginagawa ng mga ibang anak ni, Joseph, uh, ni Jacob. And yet, Joseph brought a bad report to their father. Sabi ko, grabe, no? When we look at the story, like if you were raised in Sunday school like I was, napakabait na tao ni Joseph. If you watch that play, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Coat, ba? Alam mong Christian na Christian ka pag pinanood mo yun. Parang napakabanal at napakabait ni Joseph. And yet, when we actually look at the Bible, it's a lot more real than that. Joseph was Jollibee. ba? Oh, tuloy natin. Now, Israel, or Jacob, loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age. And he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Nakita nila yung favoritism. Now, once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. And suddenly, my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. He had another dream and he told it to his brothers and said, look, I have had another dream. The sun, the moon, and 11 stars were bowing down to me. 
But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What kind of dream is this that you have had? Shall we indeed come, I and your mother and your brothers, and bow to the ground before you? So his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. When we look at Genesis chapter 37, verse 2 to 11, ang makukuha natin dito was that Joseph was a very difficult person to deal with. Parang hindi siya masaya kasama, di ba? First and foremost, he was Jollibee, pabida, nagsusumbong na wala sa lugar. Pangalawa, mayabang pa po siya. He thought he was above everyone else. And what happened in his life was that the people around him ended up, ended up resenting him. Diba? We know the story. Si Jacob sends Joseph to go to his brothers, and his brothers from a distance see him, and they conspire to kill him. Papatayin daw nila si Joseph. But Reuben, sabi po niya, being the firstborn, sabi niya, huwag natin patayin. Itapon na lang natin siya sa bangin. Kasi ang balak sana ni Reuben doon, when everyone leaves, he would save Joseph. And when he saves Joseph, ikikwento niya sa tatay niya para good shot siya. Sabi ko, ang hirap talaga maging, ano, no? maging kapatid. Yung para kayo naglalaban-laban. Now, when that happened, si Judah suddenly had a great idea. Sabi niya, Wala naman tayo magigain kung pinatay natin to. Ang gawin na lang natin, ibenta natin. And what, he, what they ended up doing was they sold him to Midianite traders and the Midianite traders sold him to Egypt and into Potiphar's household. In other words, when we look at Joseph's life, maganda o pangit? <laughs> Talaga maganda? Sino dito gusto nyo ibenta kayo sa slavery? Sino dito gusto nyo tapon kayo sa bangin left for dead? Sino dito gusto nyo yung boss nyo, yung asawa ng boss nyo, is, ano, siniraan ka tas you ended up in prison and everyone forgot about you? Maganda, pangit. Pangit, di ba? It is not a life that any of us would choose. And yet, you know something that was so strange about the story of Joseph? Ni isang beses, not once, hindi niya sinisi ang Diyos for what happened to him. When you look at the story of David, the whole book of the Psalms, about half of them were his negative feelings towards God. Diba? Yung lagi niya sinasabi, how long will you turn away from us, O Lord? How long will you prosper the wicked and, and punish the righteous? Paulit-ulit, David kept on saying, Lord, bakit ka ganyan? When we look at the story of Elijah, Si Elijah kept on saying, Lord, I'm the only one left. Just kill me. You have forgotten everyone. He kept on blaming God. And yet, in Joseph's life, ni isang beses, tinapon siya sa bangin ng mga kapatid niya, binenta, naging slave, linoko, kinalimutan, never in a single time from Genesis 37 to 49 did Joseph ever say, Lord, ikaw ang may kasalanan. Diba po? And so, if there is a lesson of faith that we can learn from Joseph, it's that trusting God means trusting God's judgments. Trusting God's judgments. Because, ano bang gagawin natin pag may pangit na nangyari sa buhay? Ano bang gagawin natin when life ends up becoming like life? Eh, ang buhay, ganyan talaga, di ba po? Ang sabi po ng Bible, the sun rises and sets on the righteous and the unrighteous. It rains on the righteous and the unrighteous as well. Whether mabuti ka o masama, you will have good days, but you will also have bad days. Pero pansinin po natin, it's easy for us to attribute good days to God. Sinasabi natin, thank you, Lord. But when things are happening that are not in our favor, yung mga panahon na ayaw po natin, what do we say? Lord, ano bang ginawa ko to deserve all this? Iligtas mo ko, alisin mo ko sa panahon na to. But what if? That is precisely what you need. Bakit po? You know an example, or you know what's something that's so strange about Joseph? Sino holy dito? Alam yung kwento ni Joseph? Okay, seems to be almost everyone. Now, the two dreams that Joseph had, 
nagbaw ang kanyang mga kapatid at magulang sa kanya. Knowing what we know, was he wrong or was he right? Diba? Was he wrong or was he right? Nagbaw ba talaga ang mga kapatid niya sa kanya? Nagbaw ba talaga ang tatay niya sa kanya? Yes! Diba? Tama siya! But it just so happened, he was in the wrong place and the wrong time. Kasi po, whether you're right or wrong, if you are in the wrong, sorry, whether you're right, if you're in the wrong place and in the wrong time, in the wrong context, you are still wrong. Kaya you know something quite interesting? Sabi nga po nila, you want to understand timing and you want to understand value. There was a story one time of a father who wanted to teach his son what value truly meant. So sabi niya, anak, wala akong pera. Pero, meron akong kotse dito na pwede ko ipamana sa'yo. So sabi, kotse lang ang meron ako sa'yo. Ibenta mo yung kotse at yung value na makukuha mo, sa'yo na. Okay? Pero sabi lang ng tatay, bago mo ibenta, siguraduhin mo itanong mo sa'kin kung okay ang presyo. So, yung bata, he goes and sees the car. Yung kotse, sobrang luma, sobrang kalawang, yung literal pang junk shop na. Okay? So, yung bata, isip niya, sino kaya bibili nito? Punta siya sa junk shop. At pagpunta niya sa junk shop, sabi, sa kan, sabi niya, Sir, magkano ba makukuha ko para dito? Tinignan ng tao yung, yung kotse, sabi niya, parang ang pakiramdam ko, walang value tong kotse na to eh. Pero bibigyan kita ng 1,000 para sa kotse na to. So sabi niya, ha? 1,000? Sige, teka lang ha, tanungin ko lang yung tatay ko. So punta siya sa tatay niya, sabi niya, Dad, ang offer sa akin para sa kotse, 1,000. Sabi ng tatay, anak, Tingin ka pa, baka nasa mali ka tumitingin. So, this boy goes and ends up in a car dealership. Okay? Kasi siyempre, sino ba nagbebenta ng kotse? Siyempre, car dealership. Sabi niya, baka naman, pwede ko i-trade in to. Ano ba value ng trade in na to? So, punta siya, sabi sa kanya, Sir, uh, yung kotse mo masyado ng luma. Nan, nan, nanlilimahid na, kinakalawang pa. Walang value yan sa trade-in. Sabi ng bata, ah, ganun po ba? Sige, balik siya sa tatay niya. Sabi niya, Dad, pumunta ako sa car dealership, wala daw value yung kotse na to. Sabi po, anak, maghanap ka pa. So yung bata, they ended up looking more. Eh, pumunta na siya sa junk shop. Mukhang junk yung kotse. Sabi, 1,000 lang. Ayaw niya. Punta siya sa car dealership. Hindi niya alam. Eh, ano, yung car, yung, ano, car dealership, wala daw value. So finally, ginawa niya ang ginagawa ng lahat ng taong hindi alam ko anong gagawin. Pumunta sa Facebook at nagtanong. Sabi niya, WTS. Alam niya yun? Walang, walang nagbebenta, buy and sell sa Facebook dito. Diba? WTS, want to sell. Tapos pinikturan niya. Nagulat siya because after some time, may nag-message sa kanya. Sabi niya, still available? Sabi niya, yes. Sabi niya, sige, wag mo na ibenta, kukunin ko agad. Magkano ang presyo? Sabi nung tao, hindi ko alam, best offer. Sabi sa kanya, nung, nag, ano, nung gusto bumili, I will buy that car for 1 million pesos. Okay? Magkano po siya sa junk shop? Magkano siya sa car dealership? Bakit siya binibili ng 1 million? So, lapit siya sa tatay niya, Dad, may nag-offer 1 million. Sabi niya, anak, May gusto kasi ako ituro sa'yo. Itanong mo muna kung bakit 1 million. Sabi, Sir, bakit mo gusto bilhin ng 1 million yung kotse na to? Sabi niya, Sir, hindi mo ba alam? 1967 Ford Mustang yan. Pag ma-restore ko yan, mas mahal pa sa 1 million yung value niyan. Balik siya sa tatay niya, Dad, 
Yung kotse mo pala, 1967 Mustang. Sabi, ang taas daw ng value nito pag ma-restore. Sabi ng tatay sa anak, anak, yan ang ibig ko sabihin sa'yo. Gusto mo malaman kung ano ang value ng isang bagay? Hindi yan na pare-parehas kahit saan ka pumunta. You have to be in the right place, talking to the right people before they can appreciate what you have. Sabi ko, grabe, no? What will we do if we're in the wrong place and the wrong time talking to the wrong people? Eh, sometimes, di ba po, this is the only thing we know. We will not be stretched to go in different places and try different things because we are, this is all we know. So what does God do when He finds us in the wrong place and in the wrong time? He finds a way to make us listen. And guess what? Many times, we don't listen. <laughs> diba? We don't listen. Why? Because we will only listen when we can see the value of what is being said. And many times, we don't see it because life is too good. So, what does God do? He sends a problem our way. He sends a problem and tries to get us stressed because stress is our body's way of making us listen. Now, there's a book called The Upside of Stress written by Kelly McGonigal, and she says this about stress. If you had to sum up how you feel about stress, which statement would be more accurate? A, stress is harmful and should be avoided, reduced, and managed. Or B, stress is helpful and should be accepted, utilized, and embraced. Okay? Sino po dito? A, ang view natin sa stress. A, masama siya. Okay. Sa taas. Talaga ha? So lahat tayo, B? Sino B? Sige, taas nyo kamay nyo, pahirapan natin yung mga tao na to. Hindi. Hindi, by the way, no? How much money is being spent every year on distressing? Di ba? Bakit ka nagbabakasyon? Ah, pantanggal stress. Ba't ka nagpapamasahe? Pantanggal stress. Ba't ka nanunod na Netflix? Pantanggal stress. Ba't ka naglalaro ng video games? Pantanggal stress. Pansinin po natin, ang words natin palagi, pantanggal stress. So talaga ba, we believe that stress is helpful? By and large, our belief will dictate what the experience is. Kasi yan ang sabi niya, five years ago, I would have chosen A without a moment's hesitation. I'm a health psychologist, and through all my training in psychology and medicine, I got one message loud and clear. Stress is toxic. For years, as I taught classes and workshops, conducted research, and wrote articles and books, I took that message and ran with it. I told people that stress makes you sick, that it increases your risk of everything from the common cold to heart disease, depression, and addiction and that it kills brain cells, damages your DNA, and makes you age faster. In media outlet range, outlets ranging from the Washington Post to Martha Stewart weddings, I gave the kind of stress reduction advice you've probably heard a thousand times. Practice deep breathing, get more sleep, manage your time, and of course, do whatever you can to reduce the stress in your life. Now, what changed her mind? Ito nangyari. In 1998, 30,000 adults in the United States were asked how much stress they had experienced in the past year. And they were also asked, do you believe stress is harmful to your health? So two questions. Gano karaming stress at naniniwala ka ba na masama ang stress sa buhay mo? Eight years later, the researchers scoured public records to find out who among the 30,000 participants had died. Let me deliver the bad news first. Pakinggan niyo po to, ah. High levels of stress, okay, increase the risk of dying by 43%. Okay? Sino dito, dito may stress? Sino dito nasi-stress? Nasi-stress? Malapit na kayo mamatay. 43% increase, ah. Grabe yun, ah. That's a very, very high increase in risk. Sabi ko, grabe, talo yosi. 
magyosi ka na lang kaysa sa mas stress. Sabi ko, grab. Ang hirap na balita niya, no? Eh, you know, that's the reason why so many people in, in my generation, they ended up moving out of Manila and out of corporate jobs. Kasi grabe yung amount of stress sa buhay po sa panahon na to. And you know, I was studying it a little bit you know, over the past few months. And for example, no? Did you know that inflation over the past 30 years has increased by about 30-40%? Okay? 30-40%. to 40%, Whereas wages have only increased by about 6% or so. So, hindi makahabol ang increase ng wage sa increase ng inflation. Meron nga akong kaibigan na natawa po ako eh, kasi sabi niya, gra- nagulat siya kasi grabe daw. Ang presyo daw ng turon ngayon sa SM, 65 pesos. Kasi sabi niya, ang huling bili niya ng turon sa SM, 20 pesos, may tubig pa. Sabi sa kanya, Sir, Ikaw naman, seven years ago pa po yun. So isipin niyo po, no? in seven years, 20 pesos na turon na may tubig pa became 65 pesos walang tubig. That's an increase of 3.5 times. Hindi naman, 3.25. Diba? Grabe yung increase ng presyo, no? So a lot of people ended up trying to figure out how do we live with work-life balance? Kasi, should we wait before we experience life, or should we experience life now? So I kind of understand where they're coming from. Sobrang stressful naman kasi ng panahon na to. But, what do you do about the people who have responsibilities? Diba? Ang gagawin natin? Hindi lahat ng tao may liberty na iwanan ng lahat ng alam nila and move to somewhere that's more comfortable. Anong gagawin natin kung meron tayong mga anak? Anong gagawin natin kung meron tayong mga magulang na, na yung kalusugan nila, pabagsak na. So, are we just going to die from stress? Hindi, yun yung isang bagay na napag-usapan ko po with a couple that I wed eh. Kasi sabi po nila, initially, their plan, and they wanted to ask me if I do international weddings, sabi ko, si Pitbull to, Mr. Interna- international. ba? De joke lang. But, sabi ko po, of course, pero why are you wanting to do an international wedding? Sabi nila, because coach, Mahal. Anong mahal? Mahal nyo isa't isa? Hindi, mahal. Anong mahal? Mahal magpakasal. Sabi ko, o nga. Bakit? Kasi coach, ang mahal magpakain ng tao. ba? Kasi ano ba talaga mahal sa kasal? Yung pagpapakasal o yung pagpapakain sa lahat ng tao? ba? Mamaya at mamaya, yung nanay at tatay, mag sila ng ultimo kababata nila nung 19 kopong-kopong, ba? So mamaya ikaw, hello po, sino kayo? Tapos yun pala nakikain lang. So sabi niya, coach mahal. So balak sana namin mag-international para tatlong tao lang makakarating. Kasi mas mura pa daw lumipad at magpakasal sa ibang bansa kesa sa magpakasal sa Pilipinas. So sabi ko, okay, I understand where you're coming from. Pero sabi ko, how old are your parents? Sabi, actually coach, isa yun sa mga problema. Medyo may edad na yung mga magulang namin at uh, may sakit pa. Sabi ko, okay. Gusto mo ba na sa ibang bansa kayo ikasal, na kayo-kayo lang? O gusto mo may iiwan kayong kahit konting alaala sa magulang nyo? You won't always have your parents with you. Sabi ko, coach, actually yun yun eh. So sabi ko, ba't kayo nagtitipid sa isang bagay na God willing gagawin nyo lang once eh may kakayanan naman kayo. Sabi ko, why not do this for the people that you love? You see, yun yun eh, yung balance. Ano bang gagawin natin? Do we delay gratification or do we also create memories? I kind of understand where they're coming from. Eh, stress naman talaga kumita ng pera. ba? Kaya after ko sila ikasal, tinanong ko sila, maghahani mo na ba kayo? Ipon muna, coach. Ipon. Ang hirap. Hindi kami makalunok ngayon. Sabi ko, o nga naman, kasi mahal. Pero kamusta, masaya kayo? Coach, hindi mabayaran yung ngiti at tuwa ng magulang namin. Sabi ko, you see, that's life eh. Diba? We have to learn how to balance certain things. So sabi ko nga eh, we're not always supposed to take away stress. Sometimes, that stress 
will make it may, will make life better depending on the que- on the question para saan ba to lahat di ba why do we do the things that we do kasi kung masagot natin yan we're in a good place kung hindi natin masagot yan guess what tayo yung part ng 43% na malapit na mamatay kasi if we cannot answer what stress is for para saan ba to lahat kawawa tayo. Ano nahanap po ni Kelly McGonigal? This is what got my attention, sabi. The increased risk applied only to people who believe that stress was harming their health. Yung mga namamatay lang, yung mga tao nagtit naniniwala na masama yung stress. O ito, pakinggan nyo to ha. People who reported high levels of stress but who did not view their stress as harmful were not more likely to die. In fact, they had the lowest risk of death of anyone in the study, even lower than those who reported experiencing very little stress. Narinig niyo yun? Kung mataas ang stress mo, pero naniniwala ka na may rason ang mga bagay. There is a reason why we're doing this. You live even longer than yung mga taong pahaya-hayahay lang sa beach. Sabi ko, grabe, no? The most important question to ask in trusting God is, para saan ba to lahat? Why are things happening the way they are happening? What are things for? What is the purpose behind all of this? Because whatever happens, there is a message being passed. In the book, Learning to Walk in the Dark, written by Barbara Brown Taylor, she says this exactly. Sabi niya kasi, a few months into studying the dark, which is something that a lot of people don't like, ayaw natin ng dilim, I found a book called Healing Through the Dark Emotions by Miriam Greenspan, a psychotherapist with 30 years experience. Ten years into her vocation, she says, her first child, Aaron, died two months after he was born without ever leaving the hospital. Like any parent struck down by such loss, she woke up every morning in the salt sea of grief and went to bed in it every night, doing her best to keep her head above water in between. This went on for weeks, then months, during which time she could not help but notice how uncomfortable her grief was making those around her especially when it did not dry up on schedule. So, na-imagine natin, no? Si Miriam Greenspan, namatayan siya ng anak, two months lang, hindi man lang nalabas sa hospital. And she felt so much grief. And she was, you know, as usual, nagluluksa. Alam niyo po yun, namatayan eh. It went on for months. Na-realize niya, the people around her ended up going farther from her. Parang ayaw na siyang kasama. Bakit po? According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 4, sometimes called the Psychiatrist's Bible, ito, patients grieving the death of a loved one are only allowed two months. Ulitin yun, ha? Mamatayan kayo? You're only allowed two months for symptoms such as sadness, insomnia, and loss of appetite. If their grief goes on longer than that, they may be diagnosed with depression and treated with prescription drugs. Sabi ko, tindi, no? Now, question. Kunyari, mamatayan tayo. Is two months enough to get over it? Sapat na ba yun, dalawang buwan? Sapat na ba ang dalawang buwan para kalimutan ng tao? Hindi, eh, di ba? You know, I attended the wedding one time. And you know, the, the wedding was so interesting kasi yung, yung groom... Yung tatay niya died about 10 years ago. Okay? So, bata pa siya, teenager siya nung, nung namatay yung tatay niya. So, obviously, dun sa wedding niya, wala na yung tatay. So, yung, yung, na, na, yung bride-to-be, ang galing. Kasi sabi ko, manipulative. De, joke lang. <laughs> De, sabi ko, ang galing. Kasi siyempre, narinig niya yung asawa niya, sabi, malungkot siya kasi wala yung daddy niya sa kasal at lahat. Alam mo yung ginawa ng bride? Dun sa bouquet niya, nagsabit siya ng picture nung tatay, nung lalaki. Now, isipin nyo, no? Ten years na. Ten years nang patay yung lalaki. Paglakad nung bride sa ano, sa bridal march, 
nung nakita nung nanay at nung, nung husband niya, yung picture nung tatay, nag-breakdown, umiiyak. Sabi ko, grabe no, 10 years. Hindi ganun kadali kalimutan. Pero pansinin po natin, para tayong may problema, may problema tayo because we don't like negative emotions. We don't like to hear, no, I'm grieving, I'm sad. Ang gusto natin marinig lang good vibes. You see, there's something wrong with us. Sabi nga po eh, continue ko lang po. Grief, Greenspan noticed, perhaps the most inevitable of all human emotions, given the unalterable fact of mortality, is seen as an illness if it goes on too long. Her mother, a Holocaust survivor, had actively grieved for the first 10 years of Greenspan's life. And she wondered, was this too long a grief for genocide? 10 million Jews pinatay, is that too long? I don't think so. The wondering led her to explore the idea that emotions such as grief, fear, and despair have gained a reputation as the dark emotions not because they are noxious or abnormal, but because Western culture keeps them shuttered in the dark with other shameful things like personal bankruptcy or sexual deviance. Anong sabi? It's as if our culture does not want the dark. Pansinin natin. Has anybody ever played the game? How many people do you think will come to your funeral? Kunyari, di ba? Mamatay tayo. Ilan kayang taong malulungkot? Ilan kayang taong makikiramay? Kasi nawala ka na. Sino dito tinanong nyo na sarili nyo yun? Pansinin natin, konti lang. Sa taas, meron ba? Konti lang. Bakit? Kasi ayaw natin pag-usapan ng kamatayan. Pero tanong mo yung katabi mo, sa tingin mo, ilan pupunta magba- kung magpa-birthday ka? Ultimo, di mo kakilala, darating. Para lang makikain ng pansit mo. Pansinin po natin, we like the idea of people coming when it's a celebration, but we don't like the we don't talk about the idea who's gonna come if there's something bad that's gonna happen in my life. So ang tanong, kaninong kasalanan yun? E tao tayo eh. We're supposed to feel these things. For example, di ba? Masolubsub ka. Are you supposed to ignore the splinter? Malit na bagay, di ba? Splinter. Maliit. It's easily ignorable. But that pain, di ba? Masakit o hindi? Masakit, masalubsob, di ba? That pain is telling you something. If you don't mind that pain, ano mangyayari? It's gonna turn into an infection and become even worse. But we're so used to numbing the pain. Pag may masakit, anong ginagawa natin? Ponstan. Di ba? Pag may masakit, alaksan. May konting maramdaman lang sinusubukan natin patayin yung nararamdaman natin eh. It's as if we're afraid we're shattering ourselves. If you have ever spent time in the company of the dark emotions, you too may have received subtle messages from friends and strangers alike that you were supposed to handle them and move on sooner rather than later. Now, some of us have even gotten the message that if we cannot do this on schedule, we may not have enough faith in God. Diba? Grabe no, kinonekta pa sa Diyos. That if you're not able to experience happiness, turning mourning into dancing, hindi kulang ka ng faith sa Lord. Na, that if we had enough faith, we would be able to banish the dark from our beds and replacing them with the light angels of belief, trust, and praise. Greenspan calls this spiritual bypassing. Using religion to dodge the dark emotions instead of letting it lead us to embrace those dark angels as the best, most demanding spiritual teachers we may ever know. One of the main things that tip people toward garden variety depression, she says, is a low tolerance for sadness. Ulit ko ah. Ano daw ang nagko-contribute sa, dark, sa depression? Hindi sadness. Ano daw po? 
low tolerance for sadness. Yung hindi mo masikmura, maging sad. It is the inability to bear dark emotions that causes many of our most significant problems. In other words, and not the emotions themselves. When we cannot tolerate the dark, we try all kinds of artificial light, including but not limited to drugs, alcohol, shopping, shallow sex, and hours in front of the television set or computer. Sino subukan natin ni distract sarili natin. So Greenspan says, there are no dark emotions, just unskillful ways of coping with emotions that we cannot bear. The emotions themselves are conduits of pure energy that want something from us. Now, anong ginagawa daw? What are dark moments? What are being thrown in a pit, being sold into slavery, being slandered, and being forgotten do for us? Ito daw ang sabi. They wake us up, tell us something we need to know, break the ice around our hearts, and move us to act. Ano daw ginagawa? They make us pay attention. Minsan yun yung problema eh. We don't listen unless there is something painful. And that's the reason why, you know, I've handled so many funerals and wake services. And one of my favorite, 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 favorite uh, things to quote is from R. Kent Hughes, a very, very well-known pastor in America. At ang sabi niya, death is the enemy, yes. But death is also your teacher. Sabi niya, ang kamatayan, yung force tayo to become sad, masama yan, masama, kalaban natin yan. But it also teaches us something. You know what it teaches us? It teaches us to ask the question, what matters in my life? Ano ba talaga may saysay? Because sometimes, dahil sa takbo ng panahon, there are things that we don't mind. Nagiging imbalance po tayo. You know, sabi ko nga po, when I tried to think about the year 2024 as the beginning, ang pakiramdam ko po, like, there is a very, very strong message of the year where it's trying to get us to try to figure out what matters in life. No? Kasi alam niyo po, maraming tao ang simula ng taon nila maganda. But you know, as a pastor, ang trabaho ko po is to really, really listen to people. And ito yung lagi ko po sinasabi, walang naghahanap ng pastor pag maganda nangyayari sa buhay. ba? Tingnan nyo yung katabi ninyo. Hindi niyan hinahanap yung pastor pag nag- nagsiselebrate. Hinahanap nila ang pastor pag nagkakaleche-leche ng buhay. ba? So can you imagine, January, di, pa, di po, December 31, ang unang sumalta sa akin, bad news. Coach, may sakit si ganito. Coach, may namatay si ganyan. Coach, si ganyan. Tuloy-tuloy, from the, January all the way up to now. Sabi ko nga, grabe, no? What message is God trying to make us listen to? Because alam niyo po, we tried to do something as a church. For the past three years, alam niyo po, we, we, we fought the biggest enemy that we could find. And the biggest enemy that we could find in the past three years was the pandemic. ba? Yan ang totoong pinakamalaking kalaban na hinarap natin. We tried to face COVID and we tried to face social isolation. Two of the things that affected people very deeply. Kasi not only is the health and the fear something that we had to deal with, but also the after effects of spending so much time alone. So, of course, we had to face that. And the best way that we could face it is by throwing parties. And yeah, for the past three years, po, we tried to do so many events to get people to come, to get people to, re- to remember there is life to be lived. And by the way, anong sabi ng World Health Organization two days ago? COVID is now officially like the flu. In other words, hindi iniintindi. Hindi po ko yan. World Health Organization po yan. And that just came out this week. So can you imagine, we got past it. Now, what were the things that we did not mind when it came to our uh, battle of fighting COVID? 
And that's something that, alam niyo po, ended up being something that we went through as a church. And dami pong namatay. You know, just last week, uh, one of the core members of our church in Pampanga passed away very young. She lived a very full life and she was such a blessing to many people. But you know, something that I kept on hearing, she had so many dreams still to do. And dami pang pangarap. So sabi ko, grabe no, sayang. Uh, I mean, she's now uh, in heaven worshiping go- the Lord. But I was thinking, what would have another extra two years have done? No? Ang daming pangarap. Grabe tong tao na to pag magtrabaho. Todo. What could have been accomplished? And so, I felt that for a lot of us, maybe not just workers of the church and not just members of the church, but even people who, are, you know, who are not part of the church have forgotten to take care of our health. Diba? Kasi nung bumukas ang lahat, lahat ng napent up energy, nag, nag-revenge travel tayo, nag-revenge eating, nag-revenge party, lahat ng ginawa natin talagang todo to the max. Yung hindi pwedeng party, dapat mega party. Hindi pwedeng one travel, dapat ten travel. ba yung mga ganong usapan, yung ginawa talaga natin the past two years. And so, alam niyo po, I started reading. And there's a very, very interesting book that people should get. It's called Outlive. Outlive. O-U-T-L-I-V-E. It's written by Dr. Peter Atia. Peter Atia was once upon a time America's number one pancreatic oncological surgeon. Okay? So, pancreatic cancer is one of the most aggressive forms of cancer. Yung usually, pag nakakuha ka ng pancreatic cancer, death sentence yan. But, he was the most skillful surgeon, kaya niya tanggalin yung cancer. Ang problema, sabi niya, Lahat ng taong lumalapit sa akin, after a few years na mamatay. Sabi niya, even if the surgery was successful, the chance of survival were very low. So, para siyang nabagabag. So, sabi niya, I need to do something different. And so, he creates an institution that whose main purpose is to try to catch people upstream. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Di ba? Now, imagine nyo, nasa bangka ang tao. Na yung bangka, nasa ilog, at yung ilog, hindi makita ng tao, pero nakita ng nanunod sa side, yung ilog papunta po sa waterfall. So yung tao, nakasahil lang siya sa bangka, wala siyang kamuwang-muwang, pero yung tao na nanunood, nakita niya, mamamatay yung tao. Now, sabi niya, kung sinubukan kong ligtasin yung tao, pag malapit na siya sa waterfall, pwede ko siyang maligtas, pero mataas ang chance na hindi. Diba? Kasi malapit na siya sa waterfall eh. So sabi niya, my job, uh, what I want to do, is to catch people pag malayo pa lang sila. Pag malayo pa lang sila galing sa waterfall. That's what he calls catching people upstream. So, what does he mean by catching people upstream? We must learn to listen and pay attention to what is happening in our life. Okay? Bakit? Tignan nyo uli yung katabi ninyo. Sige na, tignan nyo. No promises, pero si last na. Tignan nyo. Takot mamatay yan. Takot mamatay yan. Hindi ko sinasabi na ayaw niya makita si Lord, pero the very thought of dying is something scary to us. How do we know? Ilan dito nagpapa-executive check-up? Konti lang, no? Sa taas. Konti rin lang. Sabi ni Peter at Tia, bakit? Ba't ayaw niyo magpa-check up? Kasi, takot ka sa makikita mo. ba? We are afraid of the results that we're gonna see. Ang point ni Peter at Tia, we should not be afraid. Why? These results are going to tell us what we must prepare for. Because every ill has a counter-cure. Meron kang pwedeng gawin para saluhin yung sakit. Now, sabi niya, apat lang ang papatay sa atin. He calls it the four horsemen. The first is neurological. Okay? Ano yung sabihin niyan? Alzheimer's. So, neurological disease. So, by the way, he makes a distinction between slow death and fast death. These are what I call, I call slow deaths. 
Fast deaths kasi, yung minurder ka, nasagasaan ka, nalaglag ka sa building, yun, mabilis mamatay. But the slow deaths are the lifestyle, chronic degenerative diseases. First is neurological. So if you have a checkup, you're able to see if you have these markers. May kailangan ka gawin to catch yourself upstream. The second is metabolical. Metabolical, diabetes, renal failure, kidney, yung mga ganong mga bagay. So usually, they have to do with the metabolism of a person. Meron kang pwedeng gawin para saluhin yan. Third is cancer. Okay? Cancer. Of course, cancer in all forms. An abnormal growth. Yun ang ibig ng cancer. And the fourth is heart. Okay? So whether heart attack or what not. By the way, neurological stroke. Pwede rin yan. So, sabi niya, apat yan. And usually, your checkup will tell you which markers are high. Mataas ba BP mo? Mataas ba kolesterol mo? Mataas ba yung mga ganito mo? Yung blood sugar? Pero pansinin natin, nagkukunyari tayong ayaw natin makita or wala nangyayari. Because we don't want to face the dark emotions. Kasi ano mangyayari pag makita mo yun? Sino ba dito makita nila, Uy, malapit ako mamatay! Yehey! Wala naman eh, di ba? Pero ang point ni Peter Atiyah, dapat nating harapin. Because then and only then will we know what we can do to fight it. How do we know what we'll fight? We won't unless we actually have an idea. Kaya sabi ko po, that's true. Most of us, we are afraid of the dark because we're afraid of what we can see, what we will see. But there's a reason why we must face it. Because it is the only way that we will find God's faithfulness. Trusting God means trusting God's judgment. If God brings you to the dark, if God brings you through challenges, if God brings you through these, these difficulties, we must trust that God has a plan. But if we trust God, that's what's going to lead to finding God's faithfulness. In Genesis 45, we have, we, we go towards the end of what happened in the story of Joseph. So, alam natin, di ba? Joseph uh, was sold into slavery. He ended up discerning the dream of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. And the chief cupbearer remembered him when Pharaoh had the dream. J uh, Joseph was able to interpret the dream and the Pharaoh put him in charge. Because of this, his brothers came to him when it was famine and he was able to help them. Pero he, they did not recognize him. So in this moment, he reveals himself to his brothers. In verse 45, sabi po dito, Then, verse 4, Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So, it was not you who sent me here, but God. You know, the interesting thing about this, this interaction was the fact that Joseph was able to say, Hindi kayo ang nagpadala sa akin dito, Diyos. God was the one who sold me into slavery, brought me to prison so that He might use me to preserve life. Now, that's something so interesting for me. Kasi po, you know, sometimes our problem is, we are given the chance, gusto natin baguhin ang buhay natin. Di ba? Yung, ay, sana, anak na lang ako ni Bill Gates. Yung mga ganong usapan, di ba? Ay, sana, para na lang ako si Elon Musk, pinakamayaman sa buong mundo. We always want to change something about our lives. And there was an interesting doctor who said, you know, whenever we want to change something in our life, that shows you a person who has not dealt with the dark. 
hindi pa niya nakikita yung dark night of the soul niya at hindi niya kaya harapin. Bakit? Think about it. Many of us may mga pinagdaanan sa buhay. You probably won't be your age today kung wala kang pinagdaanan. Ba- maging bata ka man o matanda, ang bata marami rin pinagdadaanan eh. May bullying, may mga problema sa school, may problema sa pamilya, ang dami na pagdaanan. And probably now, you're in a better place than where you started. Whether you're in a better place or in a worse place, may nalampasan ka eh. Now, everything you went through was only, po- was only, sorry, was what made it possible for you to arrive where you are. So, kunyari, di ba? May dinaanan kang pangit sa buhay mo. Hindi ka lab ng mama mo. Mga ganong usapan, di ba? Pero ngayon, may tayo ka. You are a loving person to other people. Willing ka ba i-trade yun na mahal ka ng nanay mo pero ang pagmamahal mo para lang sa nanay mo at nakalimutan mo lahat na ibang tao? You see, there's a reason why things happen eh. And when we know why things happen, we are able to say, you did not send me here. God sent me here. What man meant for evil, God can mean for good. In the book, This Thing Called Christianity by Jefferson Bethke, he talks about a concept called shalom. Sabi po niya, shalom is a Hebrew word for peace, for rhythm, for everything lining up exactly how it was meant to line up. Shalom is happening in those moments when you are at the dinner table for hours with good friends, good food, and good wine. Shalom is when you hear or see something and can't quite explain it, but you know it's calling and stirring something deep inside you. Shalom is a sunset, that sense of exhaustion yet satisfaction from a hard day's work, creating art that is bigger than itself. Shalom is enemies being reconciled by love. Shalom is when you are dancing to the rhythm of God's voice. Ang ganda, no? When we are dancing to the rhythm of God's voice. Now, ito yung problema. In Genesis 1, everything was shalom. Ang problema, pagtalo natin sa Genesis 3, may nangyari. In Genesis 3, there was something called the fall, where man ended up sinning. Kaya ano nangyari? This shalom is now a dying whisper, a fractured song, a broken melody, only brought back into the right key at the feet of Jesus. If there is something that we are to recognize in this world today, alam nating marami siyang problema. Alam nating maraming problema, maraming mga kinakailan ayusin, Ang gulo-gulo niya, ang dami nag-aaway, ang dami nagpapatayan, nagtitirahan sa likod. We know that shalom, the peace that comes from walking with God and dancing in God's rhythm, is now just a whisper. Maliit na lang siya. Sometimes, sabi po niya, we have a habit of starting the biblical story in Genesis 3 with the introduction of sin in the world rather than Genesis 1, which is where God starts the story. When you start the story in Genesis 3, however, personal sin is the biggest problem in the world and sin management is the problem and Jesus arrives simply to pay for your sin. Merong kadiliman sa buhay natin at ang kailangan lang natin gawin ay patayin yung kadiliman at payagan ng Diyos na ayusin yung kadiliman. In that way of thinking, the world does not matter. Creation does not matter. Only we matter because in Genesis 3, the story zooms in on the human condition. Now, is that true? Of course, but it's not all of the truth. When you start in Genesis 1, you start with shalom not just of humans, but of all creation. And when God created the world, it had perfect peace. There was this beautiful dance that the trees the animals, the water, the sun, the rhythms of life, and the living creatures Adam and Eve were all doing. And no one missed a step. But when sin came into the world, it fractured that dance, broke the rhythm, and stopped the music. Creation stopped playing Beethoven's symphonies and started sounding more like sixth grade me trying to learn my first note on the trombone. 
My mom didn't say, oh, that's so beautiful. She probably plugged her ears most of the time. It was off and it was broken. But when you start with the creation of all things good, because that's exactly what God said about them, food, music, relationships, beauty, and all of heaven and earth being flooded with God's presence, then the answer instead is not sin management, but rather the restoration of all things. God is putting His world back together, and to do that, He's using the very people who broke it. God is putting His world back together, and to do that, He's using you and me. You and me. Tayo po ang ginagamit ng Diyos para ayusin ang mundo na ito. Tayo po ang ginagamit ng Diyos, tulad ng paggamit ng Diyos kay Joseph. Can you imagine, if Joseph remained in Canaan, Israel and Egypt would be dead because no one could interpret the dream. But because God, in His faithfulness, brought Joseph into a journey of faith that brought him through so much hardship, but in the end, so much goodness, they were able to survive. Much in the same way that God is using Joseph, God is looking for someone to work with. Maybe sometimes we forget, meron tayong part sa mundo na ito. Because we get so caught up with everything that's happening in our lives. Baka iba sa atin, masyado maraming hamon, masyado maraming balakid sa buhay, masyado maraming iniintindi. And we forget that that's not the end all of life. Hindi yan ang buhay. In the end, God is trying to restore things. And He's looking for people to, to help with this restoration. It is then and only then that we see what faithfulness looks like. Where we see na, hindi, no? Sometimes, ang nakikita lang natin yung problema, hindi natin nakikita yung resulta. Hindi natin nakikita kung paano binabago ng Diyos sa mga bagay. Kasi ang nakikita natin yung lakbay ni Joseph, yung mahirap. Gusto natin mag-end up agad sa dulo, pero nakakalimutan natin yung lakbayin. Nakikita lang natin yung life, hindi nakikita yung lifestyle. But if we look at the lifestyle of Joseph, it was a lifestyle of trusting God. What does your hardship mean? What does your struggle mean? What is all of this for? In the end, sabi po ng, ni Jefferson Bethke, it is God putting His world back together using you. Are we willing to trust God that whatever happens in our life, mabuti man, masama man, galing sa Diyos yan, at may kagandahang lalabas galing dyan. And are we willing to say, Lahat to, lahat ng pinagdadaanan ko, para to sa kaharian ng Diyos. It is only then that we see how God uses us to fix all things. Before we come into a time of prayer, allow me to share with you this story. This story comes from a video on YouTube. It talks about a restaurant manager named Jerry. Si Jerry po ay, ang dami niyo ng pinagdaanan sa buhay. Pero kahit ano mangyari sa buhay niya, he always says that life is good. Life is so good that if it was any better, I would be twins. Sabi ko, okay yun na. Sobrang ganda ng buhay na kung gumanda pa mas lalo, magiging dalawa na ako. Sabi ko, wow. What, ka, what a perspective. Now, gusto ko lang iparinig sa inyo to. Can you please have the story of Jerry? So this is the story of a manager of a restaurant in America. Let's call him Jerry. So Jerry is always in a good mood and always has something positive to say. When someone would ask him how he was doing, he would always reply, If I were any better, I would be twins. And many of the waiters at his restaurant quit their jobs when he changed jobs. They would follow him around from restaurant to restaurant 
The reason the waiters followed Jerry was because of his attitude. He was a natural motivator. If an employee was having a bad day, Jerry was always there, telling the employee how to look on the positive side of the situation. Seeing his style really made me curious, so one day I went up to Jerry and asked him. I don't get it. No one can be a positive person all of the time. How do you do it? And Jerry replied, Each morning I wake up and I say to myself, I have two choices today. I can choose to be in a good mood, or I can choose to be in a bad mood. I always choose to be in a good mood. Each time something bad happens, I can choose to be a victim, or I can choose to learn from it. I always choose to learn from it. Every time someone comes to me complaining, I can choose to accept their complaining, or I can point out the positive side of life. I always choose the positive side of life. But it's not always that easy, I protested. Yes it is, Jerry said. Life is all about choices. When you cut away all the junk, every situation is a choice. You choose how you react to situations. You choose how people will affect your mood. You choose to be in a good mood or bad mood. It's your choice how to live your life. Several years later, I heard that Jerry accidentally did something you are never supposed to do in the restaurant business in New York. He left the back door of his restaurant open one morning and was robbed by three armed men. While trying to open the safe, his hand, shaking from nervousness, slipped off the combination. The robbers panicked and shot him. Luckily, Jerry was found quickly and was rushed to the hospital. After 18 hours of surgery and weeks of intensive care, Jerry was released from the hospital with fragments of the bullets still in his body. I saw Jerry about six months after the accident. When I asked him how it was, he replied, If I were any better, I would be twins. Want to see my scars? I declined to see his wounds, but did ask him what had gone through his mind as the robbery took place. The first thing that went through my mind was that I should have locked the back door, Jerry replied. Then, after they shot me, as I lay on the floor, I remembered that I had two choices. I could choose to live or choose to die. I chose to live. Weren't you scared? I asked. Jerry continued. The paramedics were great. They kept telling me I was going to be fine. But when they wheeled me into the emergency room, and I saw the expressions on the faces of the doctors and nurses, I got really scared. In their eyes I could read, he is a dead man. I knew I needed to take action. So what did you do? I asked. Well, there was a big nurse shouting questions at me, said Jerry. She asked if I was allergic to anything. Yes, I replied. The doctors and nurses stopped working as they waited for my reply. I took a deep breath and yelled, Bullets! Over their laughter, I told them I am choosing to live. Please operate on me, as if I am alive, not dead. Jerry lived thanks to the skill of his doctors, but also because of his amazing attitude. You see life in your life. I learned from him that day that every day you have the choice to either enjoy your life or to hate it. The only thing that is truly yours, that no one can control or take from you, is your attitude. So if you can take care of that, everything else in life becomes much easier. This was a motivational story. Red. Ang galing po na sinabi po ni Jerry. In life, we always have two choices. Do we choose to live or do we choose to die? 
Do we choose to see life as something that is against us? Or do we choose to see life as a gracious gift from God? That everything that happens, whether we become like Joseph, ang lahat ng pangit sa buhay pinagdaanan, but not a single mention of God, bakit mo ginawa sa akin to? Or if we experience life not as hard, are we able to say, Lord, salamat sa regalo ng buhay na to, ah. And I know you're going to do something wonderful in this life. You see, that's what faith is. Sabi po, allow me to read lang po from the 15 New Testament words of life. When we look at the Old Testament, we don't see the words faith as much as we see it in the New Testament. But, sabi niya, neither is it absent. Think about it this way. Several of the key statements about faith in the New Testament actually point to the Old Testament. For example, on three occasions in the New Testament, we have Habakkuk 2.4, citing, the righteous will live by their faith, which is found in Galatians 3, Romans 1, and Hebrews 10. Obviously, Habakkuk 2.4 was not talking about Christian faith, but certainly, it was not talking about adherence to religious doctrines. It reflected a call to trust in the one God in uncertain and difficult times. It is true, this is one of the few times that Israel's relationship with its God is referred to using the language of faith, but this simply points to the fact that faith in the Old Testament is all about covenantal relationship. And that is the main concern of the Old Testament. Yahweh chose this nation and said, I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Exodus 6, 7. According to Jeremiah, God says, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk only in the way I command you, so that it may be well with you. This is, in short, the nature of the covenantal relationship, a bond between two people that bring them together with the expectation of mutual trust, concern, and loyalty. Pahinga niyo po to, no? It tends to be, when things are not going well, that we catch glimpses of faith language. Pagpangit ang mga pangyayari, tsaka lang na tayo nagahanap ng Diyos. Israel is chastised for wandering away from trusting God while they were in the desert. A perverse generation, children in whom there is no faithfulness. But as far as God is concerned, despite Israel's infidelity, He remains fully invested, committed, and faithful. So, to put it plainly, faith according to the Old Testament was all about committing to the covenantal God and trusting Him with one's whole self, mind, heart, and body. Most of the time, Israel's faith involves simple trust and obedience in day-to-day -day life, in relationships, work, and service to God. But there were times when what God had commanded challenged their sense of what was good, right, or sensible. And this is where we see occasions in the Old Testament of faith as belief. Do you believe that God knows what is best for you? In the end, what does he say? To live by faith was to live in trust and hope. Do you believe that God knows what is best for you? That is what we call faith. Tayo po lahat ay tumayo sa ating pagtatapos. Again, in the coming week, we will be continuing this series on faith, going through the book of Galatians. Then we're going to take one week break for the resurrection, where we're going to talk about the life and death of Jesus Christ and His resurrection before we go back to the topic of faith. Let's all bow down our heads as we end in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We come before you with hearts full of thanksgiving, O Lord God, for your faithfulness in our lives. We thank you, O Lord God, that on this day, O Lord, you remind us what faith truly means. That faith is not a matter of believing, but faith is a matter of trusting you. Trusting you that, O Lord God, no matter what happens in life, you have our backs. That no matter what we face, just like how Joseph faced his jealous brothers, being sold into slavery, Potiphar's wife, 
being forgotten by the cupbearer. No matter what he faced, O oh Lord God, he trusted in your judgment that you knew what was best for him, that you were going to do what was best in, for him. Because our trusting in you is simply a time for us to find you faithful. Because we know, O oh Lord God, that in the end, you plan for what is best. That through our lives, O oh Lord God, you are trying to heal this world. Make this world a better place. So, Father, O oh Lord God, just teach us to continue to lean on you. In our own ways, you know who we are. And you know what we are going through. Sometimes, O oh Lord God, we lose faith. But, Father, in those moments, we ask, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us so that we might find you faithful. Just like Jeremiah, as he laments in the book of Lamentations, he goes through all of the fear, and yet he goes and says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, and his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Let us also find, O oh Lord God, your faithfulness in action in our lives. We thank you. As we go our separate ways, continue to be with each and every family, each and every person, each and every relationship who is represented here. Fill us, O oh Lord God, with your love as we interact with everybody around us. And as we go back to our work, our school, and our every concern, Father, O oh Lord God, use our lives to heal this world. As we give our tithes and offerings, we give them with thankful hearts, O oh Lord God, thanking you for the opportunity to support your kingdom. And in all this, O oh Lord God, we just want to give back all glory, honor, and praise for your deserving of each and every one. In your sweet and mighty name we pray, one God forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless each and every one and God go with each and every one.